Have you noticed that ships almost always drive straight ahead into a dry dock, yet in a car? We all know that reversing into a parking space is much easier and safer. Indeed, on a conventional ship, it would be next to impossible to reverse park in the same sort of space cars use every day. So why is that? What is it about a ship that makes reversing around a corner so difficult? When we talk about conventional ships, we basically just mean a bog-standard ship with a single fixed-pitch right-handed propeller and a single rudder that can turn 35 degrees to port or starboard. When running ahead, the propeller creates a fast flow of water over the rudder, which simply propels the ship forwards when the wheel is amidships. When you turn the wheel, it moves the rudder, which diverts that fast flow of water off to one side. By resolving the forces, we can see that most of the power still goes towards driving the ship ahead, but some of it now goes into pushing the stern sideways and turning the ship. The further you move the rudder, the more of the power that goes into turning the ship rather than driving it ahead. Of course, the rudder will still work even if the propeller isn't running, it's just that the water flow will only be generated by the movement of the vessel through the water. The faster you're going, the more effective the rudder will be. As for running astern, well, things are a bit harder. Because the propeller is located forward of the rudder, when it's running astern, you're pretty much going to lose all ability to steer. Propellers work by accelerating water in a single direction. Effectively, the water particles in the outflow have all been accelerated in a uniform way, but the particles in the inflow are far less uniform. Water is sucked into the propeller from all directions, so you get a far more dispersed force area on the inflow side. Where the rudder was very effective when it was on the outflow side of the propeller, suddenly when you run astern and the rudder's on the inflow side, it's next to useless. The only effect that the rudder will have is that it will mess with the hydrodynamic balance, so you might get a small amount of steering, but it might not be in the direction you think, as it will all depend on the shape of the hull and the surrounding geography. Suffice it to say, you cannot steer a ship using the rudder by simply assuming that running astern will be the opposite of running ahead. The only water flow that you could use when running astern would be the flow due to the vessel's movement. You would need to build up sufficient stern weight to generate a general flow of water around the hull, then use the rudder to steer using whatever flow you've built up. The thing is, at slow speeds, you really aren't going to build up much of a water flow anyway, and at faster speeds, well, do you really want to be going fast astern if your goal is some tight manoeuvring? No, thinking of reversing a ship as the opposite of going forwards, 9 times out of 10 just isn't going to work. You need to look at it completely differently and rely much more on the ship's momentum. You need to get some movement going in the direction that you want the ship to go, then use that momentum to allow you to generate a turn with a kick ahead. For example, if you're in a dry dock and you want to back out and turn the ship, what you need to do is build up stern weight before you consider the turn. Once you have the ship moving, you put the rudder hard over, literally as far as it will go, and then give a kick ahead. The kick ahead will give you a burst of water flow, giving a quick blast of power to start generating a turn. With the rudder as far over as it will go, you've set up your resolve forces to give you as much turning force as possible with as little forward force as possible. The forward force will reduce your stern weight, while the turning force will start to generate the turn. The idea is that if you've built up sufficient stern weight to begin with, the kick ahead will start to generate a bit of turning momentum before the ship stops. Cutting off the power before the ship stops should result in the ship continuing to move astern, now with a bit of angular momentum as well. In the absence of any other forces, it should continue to drift that same way. Of course, you could then start running astern again to build up more sternway and repeat the process iteratively building up sternway, adding some more turning momentum and reducing the sternway, then building up sternway again. The problem is, especially with a conventional 35 degree rudder, you'll struggle to build up much turning momentum this way, so you'll have to rely on additional factors if you want to manoeuvre effectively. This is where an effect called transverse thrust comes into play. When you run astern on a conventional fixed pitch right handed propeller, you're going to generate additional forces acting to push the stern to port. The propeller is going to throw water against the starboard side of the hull, and the pressure differential between the top and bottom of the blades is going to create a bit of a walking effect. Taken together, this means that running astern on a conventional fixed pitch right handed propeller will tend to turn a vessel to starboard. If you combine that with the kicks ahead that we mentioned a minute ago, suddenly you find that the iterative process we undertook is infinitely more effective. Running astern, you'll build up sternway and generate a little bit of a turn thanks to the transverse thrust, then put the rudder hard over and give a kick ahead to accelerate the turn, albeit losing a bit of sternway, which you can rebuild when you next run astern, except you'll now maintain the turning momentum, 
thanks to the transverse thrust. So, you can manoeuvre when running astern, but only really effectively in a single direction, and only really in clear water where you have the space to shunt back and forth as much as you need. If you wanted to reverse a stern into a dock like this one, sure, it might be possible, depending on your ship's hydrodynamics, but it's so much easier to go in forwards and then reverse out, where you can build up that straight line sternway inside the dock before giving a nice kick ahead once you're out to turn and get away. Of course, up until now our discussion has been all about conventional ships with a single propeller and standard rudder only. In reality, most ships nowadays actually have high lift rudders and some form of bow thruster as well. The high lift rudder just means that rather than diverting the propeller outflow 35 degrees, the rudder can divert it much further, sometimes even up to 90 degrees. With these, rather than needing to iteratively go between steering and rebuilding sternway, once the sternway's been built, the high lift rudder can divert the full power of the kick into generating turning momentum, with pretty much none of it slowing down your astern movement. Similarly, with the bow thruster, again, pretty much 100% of its power can go into generating turning momentum, rather than cancelling out your astern movement. Not only that, but you can continue to run your engine astern, and you get the benefit of having control of both ends of the ship. With a bow thruster, docking astern into these sort of spaces suddenly becomes much easier. You just need to build up your sternway a little way out, and then stop your engine to cut out any transverse thrust. Then, as you continue to drift astern, use your bow thruster to do most of the steering, possibly just fine-tuning the stern using the rudder and the ship's natural water flow. If your stern drifts too close to the key, you can always give a kick ahead with some rudder to get it off, or simply give a longer burst ahead to safely move away and have another go. Modern manoeuvring equipment does make it much easier to effectively reverse a ship into a parking space just like a car, but it's still much simpler to go in forwards and reverse out into the clearer water. Before we go, I would just like to extend a massive thanks to this channel's plus supporters on Patreon. Your continued support helps to keep these videos free to view across social media, so on behalf of everyone watching, thank you all so much.